This lesson covers strategy and tactics. Strategy is the planning you do before a mission or before an engagement. Tactics are rules you follow during the engagement. Let's start with strategy. In wartime, whenever you fly, you are assigned a specific mission. It might be to kill as many tanks as you can. It might be to escort a search and rescue mission. Whatever it is, your job is to accomplish the objectives of the mission. Soldiers in other units are counting on you to make their job easier. This is sometimes easy to forget when you're out over the battlefield. When you see a nice, juicy target of opportunity, you must think about your mission before you engage it. It would be very unfortunate to need a weapon later in the mission that you wasted on a truck earlier. A good rule of thumb is to ignore easy targets on the way to the mission area. When you're coming home after accomplishing your mission and you have weapons remaining, go for it. Take out what you can, but only after the job is done. Another point I want to make. Trust your operations officer and crew chief in choosing your weapons loadout. I know that it is the pilot's privilege to arm his aircraft any way he likes, but these people usually have more experience than you do. Trust them. Okay, enough preaching from me. Take off and start towards waypoint one. To start the engine, press the R key. Notice that in this phase of training, you have a wingman. On the way, let's talk about stealth. A couple of lessons ago, I taught you about threats and how to deal with them. Now, here is the easiest way to deal with them. Don't stay away from them. Fly low and around them so that they never see you. The crews of those guns and missiles want nothing more than to knock a nice big piece of American equipment out of the sky and get a big medal. Don't give them the satisfaction. If you detect a threat, steer clear. There are other people, Air Force people, who are paid to attack these guys. The biggest way to avoid detection is to fly low. Fly real low, under 75 feet. Fly nap of the earth. When you detect a threat through the ASE system, fly around its area of engagement. In the time you must expose yourself to threats, make the exposure count. Expose just long enough to send a hellfire his way. So let's fly real low. If you have to slow down, that is okay. get down below 75 feet. Okay, Waypoint 1 is the IP for an attack on some armor at Waypoint 2, about 5 kilometers away. Since you flew nap of the earth, they should be unaware of your presence. Stop for a minute. I want to talk about your wingman. Your wingman is an extension of your purpose. He has the same mission as you do with the added task of keeping you alive. He also has a light load of weapons that you can direct him to use. He will faithfully follow you around, watching out for you for the entire mission. Keep him alive. He is one of your greatest assets in battle. The wingman commands are simple. To tell him to attack your current target, use the control three key. To tell him to come back and join up with you, use the control seven key. The best way to use your wingman is also the proper way to engage targets and the task for which the longbow system was designed. The best way to kill targets starts with a simple concept. You must kill quickly without being seen. To accomplish this, follow these steps. Conceal yourself at all costs. Locate and identify the enemy targets with the smallest amount of exposure. 
Poking your mast-mounted radar dome over the top of a hill is the best method. Conceal yourself again. Use the tactical situation display to prioritize and assign the targets to yourself and your wingman, concentrating on air defense threats first. Fire missiles in lock-on after launch mode. When missile countdown timers are close to zero, expose your radar again for target illumination. Scan for targets again. Repeat until all targets are destroyed. Seems pretty simple, eh? Let's try it. Turn towards Waypoint 2. Waypoint 2 is a battle point, a predetermined location that is good for engaging targets. On the other side of the ridge in front of you, near Waypoint 3, is a company of tanks covered by some air defense vehicles. Switch master modes to indirect fire and fly over to the ridge at Waypoint 2. Make sure to keep down so that the ridge masks you from the enemy radar. Pull to a hover at waypoint 2. If you need to use the auto hover stabilization system, hit the H key. Remember to keep below the ridge. Turn towards waypoint 3. Now slowly climb until your radar dome goes over the ridge. Watch your TSD. Try to expose only your radar dome. Drop down to remask yourself. Now look at your TSD. See all those nice targets. The computer has determined what they are. Millimeter wave radar is pretty useful. The H symbols represent tanks, while the triangle symbols are air defense. Back off a bit from the ridge. We are going to fire some missiles and we want to make sure that they have enough room to maneuver. Now use your cursor control in the TSD to select one of the triangular air defense symbols. This is now your FCR target, even though you can't see it. We are going to send your wingman after this target while we take out the other threat. With one threat selected, tell our wingman to attack our target by hitting the Control 3 key. Triple A tracking 1 o'clock. With one threat selected, tell our wingman to attack our target by hitting the Control 3 key. With one threat selected, tell our wingman to attack our target by hitting the Control 3 key. Copy. Attacking your target. Now select the other threat. Firing Hellfire. Make sure you have Hellfire selected. Orient your aircraft so that the LOAL missile constraint box becomes solid and fire. Now watch the countdown timer. When it gets to around seven seconds, pop back up and unmask your radar. Good job. Check to see if your wingman got the other threat. Now that the threats are gone, time to take out the tanks. Use the cursor control in the TSD. Right click and drag a box around half of the tanks. Roger, attacking your target. Now select the other zone. These are your targets. 
Taking out several targets is as easy as destroying a single target. You simply keep firing missiles until there are no more targets. Orient your aircraft on the first target and fire. Copy. Attacking your target, sir. Firing Hellfire. Now, pop up so your radar can illuminate your targets. Watch the fun. Good job. Now, go into the valley and mop up. Keep alert of hidden threats. When you're finished, go to waypoint four. At waypoint five is a convoy of trucks. Stop here at waypoint four. One thing to remember about the battlefield is that you are not alone. You obviously have your wingman, but other assets can be made available for your use. One such outside asset is an airstrike. Over the battlefield, there are usually several aircraft circling waiting for targets. These include Air Force A-10s, F-16s, and Navy F-18s. All you have to do is give them target information and they will dive in and attack. Right now, there is an A-10 waiting for you to direct it. To do this, use your TSD to select a victim. That convoy at waypoint five is a perfect target. Select a target. Now, call the A-10 using the control two key. Now, call the A-10 using the control two key. Now call the A-10 using the control two key. Roger, we are inbound at this time. Now watch, it goes pretty quickly. Approaching target.
On the list, sir. Cool, huh? Calling in an airstrike is useful if there are more targets than you can deal with. Make sure that you take out any air defense before you call them in. It is not pretty to watch a fellow aviator get shot down. Another resource you can call for is artillery. It works just like calling in an airstrike. Select any remaining convoy units and hit the control. Select any remaining convoy units and hit the control. You're on the list, sir. Select any remaining convoy units and hit the control. Select any remaining convoy units and hit the control. Select any remaining convoy units and hit the control. You're on the list, sir. Artillery is inbound, sir. It usually takes about a minute for the shells to start to hit. Watch the fun. Remember, use artillery to take out targets when there are too many for you to take care of yourself. Since artillery is not an exact weapon, do not rely on it to take out specific targets. Now, fly to waypoint 6, the egress point. When you get there, turn to waypoint 7, which is home. Slow down and hover near the waypoint. One last topic in this lesson. Sometimes you will meet enemy helicopters in your missions. The best way to deal with these guys is to try to evade them. 
Air-to-air -air combat is not what the longbow was designed for. It is capable in defending itself against other helicopters, but lacks the speed necessary to be an interceptor. When you meet an enemy helicopter, try to kill it quickly. If you are not able to, then bug out or fly towards friendly air defenses. Along the path home, you will meet several enemy helicopters. Tangle with them for a while and get a feel for air combat. Remember that cannons are just as good as stingers and that the longbow radar can see air targets in a 360 degree arc around the aircraft. Good luck. Land the aircraft. Land the aircraft. Land the aircraft. Congratulations. This concludes your longbow transition course. Remember everything I taught you. Read the Dash 10 and good luck in your new assignment.